welcome back to part two of creating a PHP pagination. In today's lesson, we're going to be allowing the users to um, edit the amount of, say, items per page and also the order which your results come back in. Now, to refresh our memories, what we're going to do is we're going to open up our last pagination tutorial and you can see that it's just showing 10 items and you click next, another 10 items, another 10 items, previous, and then the back 10 items. It goes like that. Now, what about if we want to add a form down here, which says uh, choose the amount of items per page, and then it keeps the items per page on every page and allows you to then search through with, say, 20 items per page or 50 items per page. That's actually really quite simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our code editor and right down where we're printing the pagination in HTML, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a form tag. Now, this form in the first opening tag is going to have the attribute of action, and this is going to be the page which the information is sent to. So it's going to be this current page, which is index.php. Your page might be named differently. Now, the method is going to be the same as every single method which we're using on this page, which is get, because that's how we're getting the page um, It's in the URL. So. What we now need to do is, if you can imagine a scenario when the user is on page 3 and then it suddenly decides, I want to change to 20 items per page. Now that user doesn't want to go back to page 1 and have to go through like that. It wants to stay on page 3 and then the items per page change. So how we're going to pass the information of the page across is we're just going to have the input type of hidden. Now, this input will not show on the page, but what we can do is we can give it the name of page so that in our git variable and URL at the top, it will be exactly the same as the links with the manual URL of page git, but only we're just going to set this value to also the page which we're receiving from the git variable. So just echo out the page, like so. Now we've done that, whenever we click a submit button, the first thing that's going to be entered into the URL is, for example, page equals 3 or page equals 2, whichever page you're on. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to add a select item or input field into the form. Now what this allows us to do is we can give the name of, say, per page. Now within this select, we can add options. Now we can target the option which is selected just by using this name. Options are good because you can add a different value to what is displayed to the user. And I'll show you that now. We can add in option and then we can have the value of nothing. And then this would just be equal to choose items per page, like so. So that's basically like, as it's the first option, it'll be what's displayed in the box. So it gives the user something to like, what they need to do in the box. So it says, ah, oh, I need to use this to choose the items per page. So they'll click it and then they'll see the other options. And the other options are as follows. And you can make them different numbers, but the value only has to be the integer. So let's just put 20. And then after this, you could say 20 items per page and close that off. Then we could say option 50, so value of 50, and we could say 50 items per page. So now that we've got that, what we need to do is to submit all this data, we're just going to have the input with the type of submit. And then the value of the submit field is going to be whatever the button text is. So if we just say make changes, like so, and save that. Now, before we upload it, it's not going to work at all because if you remember up here, we added a if is set get page, and that's if the page is. But now what we need to do is we need to do an if is set for the get of the per page which we're sending, which if you look down here, is the select field. All right, so now we're checking if that's if set, we're going to open the curly brace and close the curly brace. Now, if that is if set, then we're going to do a variable called per page. And 
it's going to be equal to exactly the same variable as we used last lesson to set it to 10. Now what this is going to equal to is exactly the same as the page. It's going to be a preg replace, so it filters out all the other, no other characters apart from numbers. And we're just going to make sure that we change this variable in here to the per page variable which we're looking for. Now once we've done that, we need to do an else to make sure that if they haven't put that in, like by default they wouldn't have put that in. So we just need to make sure that the default is per page 10. So the default is 10. Now the next thing you want to do is if you can imagine you're on page one and you select I want to choose 50 items per page. They'd go to next two or they would go to page two by clicking next and the items per page will change back to 10. So what we need to do is every time they go to another page or a previous page, we need to pass that data per page through to the user again or through to the script. So what we do in this variable down here, we just add an and symbol and type in our get variable per page and equals to and concatenate on another variable and that's going to be the per page variable. So I'm going to do exactly the same for the previous button. Like so. Now we can save this and now we can upload it. All right, so once that's uploaded to your site, we can refresh and you can see that we've got this form down here. It says choose items per page. So let's go down here and let's click 20 items per page and make changes. Now you can see that 20 items has been loaded in. Now the great thing about this is if we go to page three, you can see that we're on page three now and we've still kept the 20 items. Now, if we make a change on, let's say we'll go to page one and we'll make a change to show 50 items. Now we click next and we still got that 50 items. And if we go down to the bottom and change it back to 20, you can see we're still on page two and we're showing 20 items. So that's how you change that. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna show you how to change the order. And it's basically exactly the same. Okay, so to allow the user to change the order in which things are fed back to us, we're basically gonna use the same methods. So we're just gonna copy this form and we're just going to paste it below. Now, what this is gonna say is completely wrong because we've just copied and pasted it. So we need to change the information inside. But we want to keep this hidden variable um, because we obviously want them to stay on the same page every time you change the order. And what we also need to do is we need to copy and paste this because imagine if they chose 50 items per page, then they, sh then they then change the order. And then the 50 items per page wouldn't have been passed it through, so they would have gone back to 10 items per page and that would have been annoying. So we just type in per page and then we put in that per page variable which we created. Like so. Now instead of this being per page, we're just going to send the variable of order through. Now the first one is just going to be uh, choose an order. And then we're just going to say, I'm just going to give the example of by first name. So it's going to be an alphabetical order and by newest members. All right, now instead of the value being 20 and 50, that makes no sense. We're going to put a bit of SQL in here. So we're just going to do order by first name and then ascending for it to be alphabetical and then for the newest members I'm just going to do order by user ID descending so I'm going to save that and it's not going to work because if you remember when we were doing the items we had to add this in so let's copy and paste that now we're just going to change this to order. So if the order is set, then we need to check if the order variable, which we're creating now, we can't do the preg replace. And the reason for that is because it will be not necessarily, or I don't think it ever will be, just numbers. So what we're going to do instead is we're just going to do a MySQL underscore real underscore escape underscore string and open and close brackets. And within these brackets, we put the git and then the order. Now that's just going to filter out all of the bad, horrible things which people might put in to try and hack your database. 
So then we're just going to change this to order and we're going to put the default order in here. So we're just going to put two double quotation marks and whatever order you used in this query, if you did use an order, you don't have to use an order at all. You can just use these double quotation marks as blank. But I'm just going to put in the default is that. Now where that used to go, I'm just going to put in the variable of order. Now, before we upload that, let's point out some problems. Say we choose our order. We then go to the next page. Our order will be lost because we're not passing through that order variable. So let's just go and order equals order. And then we change it to here saying and order equals order. And you think that's it? No, you're wrong. <laughs> and if you did think it was it anyway. Uh, the next thing we need to change, say if you've chosen your order and then you change the amount of items you want on your page, we're going to lose that order because that order is not being sent in the hidden variable. So we need to create a new hidden input field and call it with the name of order and just pass through the variable of order. All right. Do you think that's it? Well, if you said yes, then you're right. So if we click to the page ignition, page nation actually, and refresh, you can see that we've got choose order and choose items per page. So let's test this out. I'm going to now choose 20 items per page and make changes. Then I'm going to go to the next page. So we are on page two and we are showing per page 20 and we're doing order by user ID descending. So that's the new, because that is my default one, which I set. So now if I click by first name, we're going to make changes. You can see that I now on page two on 20 and I'm going from C, D all the way down to E and F and G and I click next and we go to from G to H to I and you can see that I'm ordering by the first name and it's keeping it as I go through the pages. So in today's lesson, I've taught you how to first show the user or an option to change how many items per page. Then give the item or the user to choose which sort of order you want the user to display a page in. So that could be order by ID, order by first name and alphabetical last name. It could be ordered by the date time that it's uploaded or whatever you want. So make up your mind and use this code because it will help you out a lot. And thank you for watching my tutorials. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up on YouTube. If you're watching on my website, you're going to have to go to YouTube and just give it that thumbs up. Don't have to watch it again. Just give it that thumbs up. It really helps me out. Thank you and goodbye.